It's the launch of the Leinster Championship. I'm joined by one of the stories of last summer, which is Keane O'Neill, Newbridge or Nowhere, though that really galvanised the team. That's a long time ago now and it's a new season. And I'm guessing a lot more expected of you guys now in Kildare since you managed to dump Mayo out of the Championship last year. Yeah, I mean, it was, a, it was a fantastic story, but really one that we needed. I mean, we had a particularly poor start to the championship with, uh, you know, with our Leinster Championship defeat um, and, and had to go about things the hard way. And to be fair to the players, you know, match by match, bit by bit, they, they built themselves back up. And obviously the, the Newbridge or Nowhere story and ultimately the Mayo victory brought us on leaps and bounds because probably the next week, um, which was for Man and Navin, was our best performance of the year, you know. So it definitely was a, was a great way to progress through the championship, but it came out of a very dark place, I can assure you that. We fast forward then to the league, I suppose we can say kindly that it didn't go the way you wanted. I was watching you last week on TG Cahar, you were speaking at the Kildare Club Championship and you were, you had a perspective on it, but you could tell you were a little bit annoyed by your league performance. Yeah, for sure. And, and on, on many different levels. I mean, it was in a different league. And the reason I say that, we won three, we drew one, we lost three. Um, I mean, two to three matches we lost, ultimately, were to the two teams that went up. You know, so there's a little bit of context in that, I suppose. But I, I think as a group of players and management, we just we felt we never got a run at it. Um, we, we had a lot of, you know, cruel, unlucky injuries. We were playing the league without two of our all-star nominees last year. Daniel had left, Paul was injured. Um, Niall Kelly, who's a real high-quality forward, was away and then our, our star forward you could say of the league campaign Ben McCormick he'd scored 1-1 in the first 15 minutes against Meath which was a you know a big match across the campaign and fractured his thumb then and missed the rest of the league and we, we, we just never felt we got going you know and um, I suppose it was that momentum in the championship last year through the back door that helped us get to where we got and we just felt we never really got that this year you know so it was disappointing and we've only ourselves to look at no one else that's all in the history books now though it's championship and it's Wicklow first round and I know from experience you'll be an Egypt discount Wicklow I know people say they're one of the weakest teams in the country but they have got a bit of style they have got a bit of panache and they can at times pull out a surprise and the teams like Kildare you would see be ripe for it Oh, absolutely. And I mean, listen, you know, based on, as I said, our indifferent league campaign mm -hmm. and then how we went out to, to Carlo last year early on, which was a Division 4 team. Obviously, they've been promoted and they were on a high. I mean, there's no reason why Wicklow wouldn't fear us this year. Um, and w one thing I know is that any team that John Evans prepares, number one, they're going to play an attacking style of football. And number two, they're going to work like dogs. They're going to work very hard. Um, and Wicklow have form. Um, they, they, bet, uh, they bet Kildare and Kieran McGinney's um, tenure. Um, so they did as well. So there's form there for a shock, albeit with Mikko involved, you know. Um, so you have another carry man this year at the helm and there's no doubt that they won't fear us and the job for us is to make sure that, you know, our preparations that we've been doing for the last number of weeks transfer into a big performance. You mentioned Daniel there earlier. What's the story with him? Is he going to be back in, out? What's what's his position? Yeah, Daniel's back in the country. He's back, uh, back a couple of weeks now at this stage. Um, but I guess... You know, sometimes life gets in the way of what you really want. Um, he's back in full-time study. He's coming into an exam season. You know, he, he was gone for four or five months there. So he's a lot of his own personal responsibilities, you know, if you want to call it that, uh, to take care of. And listen, every one of us, the management, the players, would love to have Daniel back in. Um, and it is a long season, please God, you know, and we'll see where things are at. But at the moment, he feels he can't commit just because of his own personal responsibilities. And, you know, I'll support Daniel in that. We have a very good relationship. We were only talking last night. Um, and we'll see where, where it goes into the future. But as of now, um, he's not involved with the group. I assume you being Kildare and the fact that you have had your big wins, a Leinster final at the very least is a target. Well, I, I'd love to say, yeah, we can plot and plan ahead through the championship, but, um, you know, we, we had a very tough and cruel start last year to the championship, and I know it's not what you want to hear, but we really have no right to look past the first round, and it's as simple as that. Um, and we didn't look past it last year either. Uh, we, we got caught badly. We, we played poorly against a team that played outstandingly well, um, and that's never going to happen to us again. That's the way I would put it. So um, the 11th of May in Dr. Cullen Park is all we're focusing on. That's probably something that John Evans is probably clapping his hands with glee, thinking about a focus Kildare. Yeah, and I mean, listen, you know, people will ask you about what are Dublin going to do to five in a row. You know, what, what other people think is, is not my business, you know, and I'm sure Jim and John and everyone else is thinking the same thing. We can only look after ourselves, you know.